Hey, what's up? It's Triggy, and we have a new addition to our engineering family. His name is 3P, or Eep, I think 3P, and he can help us build some really cool stuff. For example, after printing out the default cube, the first thing I printed out was this nutcracker. I honestly just wanted to make something where the pieces interacted. I searched up a bolt, and this is what came up, and I think it's super cool. But I think we can do even better. I found this design for a 3D printed steam engine. If we supply compressed air into this input, it should get our steam engine to spin. I headed over to Thingiverse where you can find tons of STL files ready to print. I found this design from Charles Babbage and downloaded the parts. I arranged the pieces so that they would all print in one go without overlapping and adjusted the print settings. Then I sent the data to 3P who spent the next several hours printing them out. Look at him go! Then it was just a matter of removing the pieces from the print bed. The design came with a set of instructions, again, not mine, Charles Babbage, and a quick scroll shows us how straightforward these instructions are, so let's dive into step one. It looks like here we will create the frame, add bushings, and a hose barb. But before we do that, it looks like we're supposed to clean up the pieces a bit. So here we'll trim some flashing, remove support material, and perform what amounts to an exorcism on this poor, poor cylinder. Now onto the assembly. We'll use some 3mm screws to attach the upper frame to the lower frame. I think a drill will make this go a bit quicker. Then we'll pop in the bushings. Then we'll jam this bit into the engine's ear. Let's call him Steve. Ow. The next step is to connect the pieces of the crankshaft. Easy enough, we can just glue those together. Then we want to thread the crankshaft through the bushings and affix it to the flywheel. Now, when we turn the crank, the whole midsection rotates. Next, we want to glue this pivot piece into the cylinder piece. Just like before, we'll glue the pieces together. Lastly, we want to place the piston in the cylinder, then shove the cylinder pivot into Steve's mouth while making sure the piston is attached to the crank. Then we'll just screw this in place. The instructions include a 35mm screw and a spring, which I don't have, so forget that. All that's left to do is hook up a tube for compressed air. The barb here is for quarter inch tube and I only have 6mm, so I'm going to have to attach the tube using some heat shrink tubing. Let's talk quickly about how this is going to actually work. The compressed air input is connected to Steve's left eye. When the cylinder is tilted this way, a hole in the cylinder top aligns with the eye and the piston is forced to extend. This rotates the shaft and then the cylinder pivots. Now the cylinder hole lines up with Steve's right eye, which just releases the air in the cylinder out into the open. The momentum of the flywheel keeps the shaft spinning until the cycle can start again. Then I'll pop the tubing into this quick release fitting, which I'll connect to my compressor behind the scenes here. We'll spin the flywheel to get it started, and the engine takes off.
So that went way better than expected. That was actually really cool. I hope you liked the video. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. In any case, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.